we are looking at trade balance and I just want to kind of bring us back to where we've started talking about output and growth in the economy. We have talked before about output real GDP as Y and that the component parts of that are consumption, investment, government expenditures, and net exports, which I've previously written as exports minus imported goods and we've looked at this before I've also said that this can be sometimes written as net exports here and when we talk about net exports that's really because we begin getting into trade balance here so there's a few different ways that we can understand trade balance the first one I would say is that kind of the main terms that you will often hear are a trade deficit or a trade surplus so what is a deficit here deficit here on trade a deficit would be when exports are less than imports when our exports are less than our imports and when we talk about net exports in essence what we're saying is we would have a deficit when this number is negative and how would that be negative it's negative when the imports are greater than the exports for the recent history of the United States we have been running a trade deficit this is kind of where we have been as an economy that's partly because we are a consumer driven economy we purchase a lot of goods we purchase a lot of consumption here right uh, as as Americans and so we buy goods from China and India and and uh, from Germany right goods and services there that are that are in in excess of what we export uh, there's kind of another term that often gets thrown around that we don't use as commonly uh, here in America but but other countries do have which is a trade surplus and the trade surplus would obviously just be the exact opposite that would be where exports are greater than imports here for an economy where exports are greater than imports so this would be a positive here the net exports would be a positive and I've previously said that this is a scenario where you can really have growth in your economy you get excess growth and what do we mean by that well so we have extra surplus here that would be going to producers in the economy the producers would be making more goods and services partly because the price of that good would be higher than the equilibrium price in the economy right what what does this kind of look like well this would be if I just kind of draw this out really simplistically here we have quantity for a good we have price for a good right and then we've got the demand and we've got the supply for the goods and these would be uh, this would be domestic suppliers and domestic demanders and so what would we be looking at here well if these are exports that means that the price that they can sell the good in the world right we kind of call this the world price is higher than the equilibrium point and as a result we actually end up instead of selling this quantity right instead of selling this domestic quantity we actually end up selling much more we end up selling this extra a quantity I'll call that trade I'll call that quantity trade and that extra surplus right in here right that extra surplus goes to producers we generally think that that's a good way to help grow the economy partly because we have excess right so what is it well one this is just accounting towards our GDP so it's increasing the GDP but it's also increasing the GDP in a very productive way because what are producers likely to do well they're going to hire more people right they're going to pay you for your services they're going to make larger investments in uh, in capital and building new uh, factories and things of that nature so we also think of export uh, export led growth you will often hear and that would be in a case where there's surplus it doesn't necessarily mean that you're that, that you can only grow when you're in surplus right that's definitely not the case but it's just one of the main ways that we can see kind of growth in the economy so we've got a couple things here and I'll, I'll kind of simplify some terminology that we've used before if we're looking at an economy like this then we would be calling this an open economy open economy and when we in economics when we talk about an open economy that just means that they are open to trade that it's not just domestic that you have international trade as well and so an open economy if you remember back if we kind of come down here and we talk about what did we have before we had the closed economy right where we've discussed a closed oh economy and the closed economy if you remember uh, when we talked about the closed economy we said that why right that output was equal to consumption plus investment plus 
government expenditures. And then we said that the net exports, if it's a closed economy, that there is no international trade and so net exports does not exist. And then if you remember, we kind of solved through on this and we, if we just rearrange this and we solve for investment, we said that investment would be equal to output minus consumption minus government expenditures. And then if you remember, we kind of made one more simplification here where we said, well, in that case, that means that investment must equal savings because the economic savings in an economy would be the total amount of output that we have minus everything that we consume and everything that the government spends on. What would be left? Well, that's how much we've saved, right? And saving must be equal to investment. Up here in the open economy, we've got kind of the same thing, right? But the only difference is now we have Y is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. And if we kind of go through and solve it the same way, I'm going to solve for for investment here, right? And what do we have? Well, we know that investment, right, is equal to consumption minus, I'm sorry, output minus consumption minus government spending. And then this would be kind of minus net exports. And this, right, kind of this portion is still savings, right? So if we just kind of think through this, we've got investment. This portion right here is still savings in the economy minus net exports. And the other way you will often see this written is as savings. If I just kind of solve through the other directions, save it for, solve for savings. Savings would be equal to investment plus net exports. And this really gets to kind of one of the identities that's really important when we begin discussing the trade balance, which is the net capital outflow. So there's another thing that we will often have, and there's a lot of identities in this part of economics. There's a lot of kind of, uh, I guess, self-fulfilling pro pro uh, prophecies almost, right? Because these are things that they kind of they kind of answer themselves. So if we just kind of, I'm going to bring this over here to give us a little more space. If we take this open economy and we say that savings is equal to investment plus net exports. Well, we also have another way of defining net exports. And we say that net exports is equal to something called net capital outflow. And net capital outflow is really, I'm gonna kind of write this out here just so we've got a net capital outflow. If the exports and imports are the goods and services, right? What kind of, what are these? These are the goods and services the flip side of this, if you are an if you're an individual and you pay uh, and you you purchase an imported good, what does that mean? Well, you give your money, you give your U.S. dollars to that Chinese company, right? Uh, if we export goods, that means that we sell our goods to, uh, let's say, uh, an individual in in, in uh, let's say an individual in Germany. And what do we get? Well, we get euros, and in, in, right, we get euros back for that. And so, really, the flip side of this is, if we take into account the goods and services, it must be balanced out by the asset side of this as well, by the cash, the asset side. So, net capital outflow. This is really the purchase of foreign assets by domestic individuals. So, the purchase, purchase of foreign assets, and you can think of foreign assets. Right, you can think of this as uh, cash holdings, you can think of this as bonds, you can think of this as stock in foreign assets by domestic, right, by domestic individuals, domestic, I'll put individuals. And what is it? It's the purchase of the foreign assets by domestic individuals minus the purchase of domestic, I'm sorry, the purchase of foreign assets by domestic individuals minus the purchase the exact opposite, the purchase of domestic, domestic assets by foreigners, by foreign individuals. So there's a few identities here that we just want to hold uh, constant that we want to think through is why that's the case. This is kind of the overview uh, here in trade balance. Now we're going to think through it a little bit more in terms of the data that we've seen and thinking through some of the things that would determine net capital, uh, kind of net capital outflow, which would be exchange rates and understanding what that looks like as well in the economy.